Hello, it's Susan Crutchfield with the Noonan Carnegie Library and welcome to Photography Tips with Susan. Today, we're gonna to be talking about white balance. So here's just a little bit about me. I've been a professional photographer for over 10 years and I'm the owner of Susan Crutchfield Photography. I'm also the director here at the Carnegie Library. So have you ever taken a photo and it looks a little orange or it looks a little blue? That means your white balance is not properly set. So what is white balance? The white balance is the color tone of your image. So you want objects that are white in real life to be white on the photo. The correct white balance is the color temperature of a light source. And by default, your white balance is usually set to auto. But if you want to learn how to completely control your camera, which is what we're trying to do in these photography tips, you want to learn different ways to handle white balance. So let's take a look at some photos. This is a photo I took at the Noonan Theater Company for their Christmas Story production, and this is Mike Funt. You may recognize him. He was here at the Carnegie doing our um, spy program a couple of years ago. So this is a photo I took during the show, and if you look at him, look at his face, he looks a little orange. Also, if you look at his shirt, those squares are supposed to be white, but if you look close, they're really orange. So this is not a properly balanced white balance it needs color correction. Now look at this photo. This is the same photo, but now it's too cool. If you look, it looks very blue. It looks like there's just blue light shining on him, but there wasn't blue light shining on him. Once again, it's not a correct color exposure. Now let's look at this photo. This is a photo that has been color corrected. So look at his face and you can see his face looks like a skin tone and look at his shirt and you can see those squares are not blue anymore but or orange, but they are white like they're supposed to be. So that's a properly color corrected photo. So that's what we're going for when we talk about white balance. So today we're gonna talk about four different methods to get the correct white balance. The first one is the in-camera presets. Most digital cameras will have this in-camera presets and there's several different ones you can choose from. They're all based on the Kelvin color temperature scale, which is basically just a number that's assigned to different colors from cool to warm. So for instance, on my camera, the different presets are auto, which just automatically chooses the color balance for you and it's your camera thinking for you and trying to decide what they think the white balance should be. And then there would be a daylight preset, and that's around 52K. Shade, approximately 7,000K. Cloudy, which is around 6,000K. And tungsten light is approximately 21K. White fluorescent light is about 4,000K. And then there's a flash setting. So for the presets, you would decide when to use them. So for instance, if you're out in the sun, you might wanna use the daylight setting. If you're in the shade, you'd use the shade setting. If you're under fluorescent lights, you would use the white fluorescent light, et cetera, et cetera. I personally don't use any of these camera presets. I don't find them that helpful. That might be something to try out when you first start working with white balance. So you can kind of get an idea of what they think every one of those settings should look like but I personally don't find these that accurate or very helpful, so I really don't ever use them. The next method is the custom white balance. So you can create a custom white balance by using a neutral gray card. You can get a gray card from a camera store, or you can also print one out on your printer. And so basically how you use this is you put the gray card about 10 inches from your camera lens and make sure that the card fills the frame and you take a photo of it. Then you can go into your camera's custom white balance menu and set it up to measure what it saw on the gray card on that photo you took. You'll probably have to check out your owner's manual to see specifically how the custom white balance works on your brand of camera. But I find this way to be pretty accurate. So this is a great method to use. The next method is the K color temp or the Kelvin color temperature that we were talking about earlier. This is where you can go into your camera and manually set your color balance within the K color temp range. This is a little bit of a more advanced setting. You kind of have to know the K color range off of the top of your head. So you have to practice for this a lot and kind of memorize the scale and decide where you want it. So you should be able to walk into a setting and in your head, just think of a color temperature and set it. So this is one that takes a lot of practice and it's a little more advanced and it can um, take a lot of time. So if you're 
trying to photograph in more of a hurry, this might not be the one you want to use, but it can get pretty accurate once you get that um, color temp scale down. And the next one is correcting your white balance in post-processing. So in order to use this one, we need to talk about the difference between the raw format and the JPEG format when you're taking photos. You can set your camera on JPEG, and that's just a compressed file that bakes in some edits such as saturation, contrast, and sharpness. It's really hard to undo JPEG settings in post-processing, and the white balance is very hard to fix if you mess it up in camera when you're photographing on JPEG. However, if you use the raw format, that's an uncompressed, unedited file, the files are really big and you do have to process them first before you can use them, but all the image data is preserved in the raw files. You can fix white balance really easy when you shoot raw later in post-processing. So for this one, I usually would go in and either use my K-color temp or set my um, white balance on auto, and then I can fix it later if it doesn't end up being the correct one. Sometimes it is correct, but most of the time you might have to go in and color correct it. And what I use for that is Adobe Lightroom. And with Adobe Lightroom, you can adjust based on a slider within Lightroom, to which also, by the way, matches the K color scale, where you just would move the slider back and forth until you get the proper white balance. Or you can also use the eyedropper tool to select a white part of your photo and click on it and it will color correct the whole image. And the reason why I really enjoy Lightroom is that you can batch edit in Lightroom. So for instance, you take one photo and if it's all taken in the same lighting, all the photos after that, you color correct one image and then you select all the other images, push one button to sync them all up and then there you go, you have synced and color corrected all of your photos in one fell swoop. So really you just have to color correct one photo for each different lighting set you use and then you can batch edit all of them. So this is actually the method that I use the most because a lot of times I'm photographing things that we're, we're moving quickly and it's hard to sit there and do a custom white balance or a K color temp. It really depends on what kind of method you wanna use. I suggest you try out all four and then decide which one you want, or sometimes you can use a mixture of all four formats. So thank you so much for joining me for Photography Tips with Susan White Balance. I hope you learned something today. Feel free to ask questions in the comments and we'll see you again soon.